bisa. Andrew Media Order, welcome to my Friday the 13th franchise reviews. Let's continue with Friday the 13th Part 7, A New Blood. Why did you break up the sun? The film was released in 1998, this is two years after Part 6 of Jason Lives. The film is directed by John Cole, whose uh, main talent lie with his kind of special effects, kind of makeup, prosthetics. Uh, he's done behind the scenes work with Nightmare on Street 4 and uh, Halloween 4. Uh, this is one of his kind of early movies. Now, originally, this film was going to be Freddy vs. Jason, the finally on screen appearance of these two legendary characters that have been kind of, you know, battling each other on the box office for each year on the Halloween screams. But unfortunately, due to copyright laws between both companies, rival companies, the script was never actually made and, you know, arguments will happen so they instead they had uh, Jason come back they had basically Jason versus Psychic instead. This also marks the very first appearance of Kane Harder actually playing Jason uh, within of course uh, Friday the 13th part 7 and within Jason Goes to Manhattan. Uh, fans fall in love with this version of Jason and he's been known as the character ever since and he's got so much respect and feedback. He's the most favourite Jason. Fans of the Friday the 13th franchise absolutely love his uh, interpretation of his character and I can see why he did a pretty awesome job in this movie. But still I was a young Gimitina who has special kinesis abilities and and she accidentally kills her own father. 15 years later, she comes back to the original Lake House uh, to kind of resolve her issues and kind of resolve this rage that's building up inside her. At the same time, there's a bunch of teenagers that are having a surprise birthday party next door over in the other side of the lake. And uh, by accidentally, she actually brings Jason back from beyond the grave, from beyond the lake, and he rises up to kill and you know do what he does best. Now the opening of this movie has a really cool flashback sequence uh, you know going back for all the actual movies uh, all the Jason kills and they're going back to his grave and you know having this kind of narration saying you know Jason the Jason legend you know you, you cannot kill Jason he's immortal people have tried and he just keeps coming back. And I really like the, the style of how they did that he was a very slick and they managed to show some of the best kill scenes and they showed you know Jason as he's pretty awesome badass uh, as he is. So I felt it was a really appropriate uh, opening sequence and then of course we got to the main titles which was Jason Part 7. Uh, the actual soundtrack is actually according to IMDB is recycled uh, sound pieces from the original uh, movies of the original Friday the 13th which is a bit like you know cheating in the sense it's basically like I'm too lazy to make my own soundtrack I'm gonna steal someone else's and just you know tweak it a little bit. It actually sounded pretty better than some of the uh, previous ones. It's not as cheesy or kind of funk kind of thing. It's kind of like that kind of attack soft kind of thing. It's like that, do, 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 attack then a, do, 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 attack kind of thing and it's a bit like it's like that pretty much the soundtrack. The opening of the movie also has a flashback sequence of Tina's character as a little girl uh, who accidentally killed her own father and then she wakes up in the car. Very similar to part 5 uh, with, you know, with the Friday the 13th but I'm going to allow this one to slide a little bit because I felt it actually did kind of help the narration of the story a little bit, continue the, the flow of it. And But you know I think it's a bit like, it's a bit lazy to do that thing, you know you don't really need to do that. All you need to say is 15 years later, you know, show a hospital scene, show her in the car going back to the original like, you know you don't have to have a, like, a dream sequence in that. And the fact that they even show that same dream sequence later on within, later on in the movie when she's at the lake house is a bit like well you didn't really need to do that did you you could have like, had a little bit of mystery 
street, you know, to why she's back at this, you know, lake again, or why back she's back to the house. You know, a bit unnecessary there, if I'm perfectly honest. Okay, so this movie's been my most anticipated one out of the year, Friday the 13th franchise to date. Uh, maybe when I first heard there's gonna be powers within this movie, uh, you know, I instantly thought Carrie versus Jason, I thought it was gonna be fucking excellent, and I was really excited to see this movie, and I was, I got around to watching it last night, and I have to say, um, I'm kind of disappointed in one regard of it, but at the same time, it did make up for uh, some of the slow and some of the faults of the movie. The last 10 minutes of the movie is by far the best of the entire thing. Basically, 17 minutes is kind of dragging its feet a little bit. It's got some good character development in place, it's good kills, satisfying kills, um, some good you know, character moments for sure, and uh, you know, it's okay, but I think it's beating about the bush a little bit. Considering this is Jason versus someone that has Tanaka abilities, pretty much, you know, I was expecting a lot more than I got, in all fairness, but the last 10 minutes of the movie definitely was golden, definitely uh, delivered what I wanted to see, and it was basically, you know, Jason getting his ass kicked by someone having abilities, and it was pretty awesome. But at the same time, the actual power abilities was a bit cheesy a little bit, because I thought about it and I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is an 80s movie for God's sake. You know, the way they do powers, when people have powers in an 80s movie, it's very like, you know, uh, wires on strings poking up kind of thing. It's not very kind of fast paced kind of stuff. It's very, you know, it's got that kind of like zoom into the eyes. <laughs> You know, very Carrie style kind of thing, and it's a bit like, yeah. I don't think he was atrociously bad or anything. I think he was actually pretty decent with the practical effects, and uh, Jason definitely looked fantastic. And definitely, when she was using the ability to kind of throw Jason around a little bit, especially in the stairs and a couple of the set pieces, I felt it was actually pretty awesome. And they definitely used uh, the location as well. They definitely beat the shit into Jason a little bit for sure. So I felt it delivered. The last ten minutes was golden, but you know, it wasn't massively bad. It wasn't atrocious. You know, I just felt it was a little disappointing. I was nearly giving up up until the last 10 minutes, but uh, luckily they did they pull through and they delivered something which I actually was quite happy to see in all fairness. Now, the actual death scenes in this movie I felt were satisfying to some degree, some were pretty decent kills, some were pretty brutal. Uh, my favourite was the sleeping bag death scene, I felt that was the, uh, one of the best ones. It's actually the most iconic one, they actually re reused it again within Jason X, but I felt it was just like a very, it's a typical kind of Jason kill. I uh, like in this one he's, uh, you know, uh, having these kind of custom weapons in this one, he's definitely getting creative. I think all that time in hell always definitely, you know, he's definitely to think about how can I kill my next victims in a sense every time it comes back to reality in a sense. But um, I felt he was definitely mixing it up with, you know, with the weapons and the machete and he definitely was a lot more brutal with the, with the hands, you know, like squishing heads. And I kind of like the, the kills that are more hands-on almost without a weapon, you know, it just, again, shows the power twisting somebody's head and, you know, until it comes off. <laughs> that takes some strength. Believe me, I've tried it. It's not easy to twist somebody's head off. And the human skull is much more resilient than you think it is. Of your later death scenes within the movie got a little bit boring and it was a bit like very off scream kills or very like slash don't actually see it kind of thing. Within the other movies, you see all of it pretty much, but you don't see much in this one. There's very little blood considering it's a Friday the 13th movie. But it's hit and miss, you know, I've seen worse edited death scenes. I think this movie is heavily edited. Uh, from the an uncut version, I don't know if there's one exists out there, but I felt there is more than I'm seeing here. Now, some of the characters in this movie were definitely there for the body count. You know, there's a there's a bunch of teenagers there for a surprise birthday party, which I felt actually was a pretty decent motive. That's why there's so many teens, and that's why there's so many characters there. Makes sense, but again, they're just the typical ones we we come to love and we will get killed pretty much from the Friday the 13th franchise. There's the slutty couples, there's the girls, there's the guys, and yeah, they're gonna get killed very nasty by Jason of course and that's what they're there for and that's what they're purely there for. Uh, some characters deserve to get killed especially that one woman which is basically up on ass in a sense you know basically thinking she can have any guy she wants. She gets killed off because she should you know fairness you know. Uh, some characters I felt were just there kind of thing. Characters in this movie was Tina's character which I felt was um, not too bad I think you know, for a main kind of survival girl instant, I felt she could have been better done. Her acting was blah, 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 definitely. She overacted in too many scenes, you know, especially when she was trying to cry a lot within some of the scenes. It's like, don't do that because it's not working very well for you. The main character I felt was the best in all the fairness was uh, Jason's character and of course the boyfriend. I thought the boyfriend actually was pretty decent, I thought he was smart. Uh, the love interest between Tina's character and the, the love interest I felt was quite natural, it was, it felt right, it felt pretty decent for a kind of slasher movie. 
actually pretty decent in all fairness. I um, his character was actually pretty decent and I liked him seeing it on screen. Uh, Jason's character in this movie, I felt um, had some pretty badass scenes for sure. I felt he didn't shine the most until the last 10 minutes when he caught swings up against Tina. Uh, some of his kills were very satisfying, like I said previously. But I felt in some places that he was just like in the wrong movie and play. And I happened. I, I just felt like this wasn't really a Friday the Thirteenth movie in some places. And you know, some of the pacing issues were a bit over the place. And like, there's a good point where like. Jason's in Imperial for a good 10 minutes of the movie, thinking, oh yeah, this is a Friday the 13th movie, Jason's in this movie, yeah, yeah. I think the camera work in this movie definitely made him a lot more bigger, a lot more menacing, I think, and definitely when he was, you know, hand gripping people and swinging them and throwing them about, I think he was definitely menacing, and yeah, I definitely had some badder scenes. His actual prosthetic and all makeup was fantastic, you know, the chain around him, you know, scaled the actual ribs and shit like that, all fantastic, and the, the mask was awesome, of course, with the broken bits off it, and of course, the, all the signatures from all the previous attacks tax from his uh, head <laughs> kind of thing. So I think Jason actually was pretty decent in this movie. I felt he could have been better in all fairness, but he did have a fantastic little fight scene at the last 10 minutes of the movie with Tina, which was definitely the most uh, most appealing of it. One of the things I did like in this movie was the telekinesis abilities, uh, connection between Tina and Jason. When she brought him Jason back from the Umbreon the Lake, uh, she kind of had these kind of visions, these kind of flashes of all the deaths that he's doing, uh, you know, why she's having a party or speaking to someone. And I think that's actually a pretty interesting connection just to have that, you know, it gives the survival got a bit more kind uh, of foreknowledge, like you know, someone's going around killing people. It's a bit, it makes the kind of the uh, the off-screen kill deaths a bit more, less pointless in a sense. And I think, I think she was a bit more paired. And I think when she definitely did face Jason in the last ten minutes, I think she was like, yeah, you deserve to die. I'm going to kill you nastily, kind of thing. And I felt it was actually a pretty uh, original concept to do that. And I felt it was good and appropriate for a Jason movie. It makes sense, you know, you got Jason coming back from the grave, you know, twice in the sense he's an immortal person so you know to have someone have like, abilities is a good match definitely for sure overall for the 13 part 7 i felt it was a kind of an average movie it wasn't the best it wasn't a massively brilliant uh the prosthetic and makeup effects i felt were fantastic especially in the last 10 minutes i'm going to say this again, repeatedly the last 10 minutes is the best of the part of the movie i felt it was the most satisfying it definitely delivered in terms of what i wanted to see in the first place i thought the first 17 minutes were just beating on the bush a little bit too much uh some of the character scenes were all great they were good, they were okay, but it's not what I want to see. Some of the death scenes were satisfying to some degree, but I wanted more than I got, in all fairness. I don't think it was a typically amazing movie, but I would watch it again uh, just for what I liked within the movie. So it's not bad, it's not good, it's just okay. But I would definitely recommend you go and see this movie, go and check it out. It is definitely has some good appealing bits in it, and it's Jason versus Carrie in a sense. It's, you know, what more do you want? So there you go, folks, it's been my review for Friday 13 Part 7, A New Blood. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I've used to know what you think. Do you think it was good? Do you think it was bad? Do you have any opinions? Comment down below. So in the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Moore from GoodTV. Sign up.